Amen. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start then <clears throat> tonight. Um, we've been in uh, chapter 18 of Genesis in relationship to Abraham. <clears throat> um, uh, well, you know, it'd probably be good if I just went all the way back to the first here. <clears throat> so we're just going to catch up. By starting in chapter uh, 18, verse 1, <clears throat> and, um, and we'll see where we stop from there. But this is just a reminder and a help to make sure that we're all on the same page again. <clears throat> and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground and said, My Lord, and you know that that's Adonai by now, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, you shall, and after that, you shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. Verse 7. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man. And he hasted, hasted to dress it, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by, uh, stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And so <clears throat> what we have here is a visit of the Trinity. Now... The, I don't know that the term the Trinity is used anywhere in the Bible, actually. But uh, in the Old Testament, the name Elohim represents that. And that's what this was initially. And uh, we see it a lot in uh, chapter 17 also. And we went through some of the things in relationship to Elohim. We went all the way back to the beginning. And in the beginning, Elohim created, you know, all things and, and went through that and saw that uh, 36 times Elohim was mentioned before any other name for God. And, and that represents the Trinity. It represents the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's represented here in terms of three men coming. <clears throat> and uh, we talked about that uh, Abraham recognized them. Well, how are you going to do that? <laughs> well, you're going to know them. You're going to have to know them. You're going to have to know them from your spirit, not some teaching, not Randy's teaching, not anybody else's uh, presentation. You, you, to do that... To have those kind of eyes and that kind of heart that can find him, it's going to take you knowing him in a very intimate way. And we talked about that. We talked about the fact that, you know, how, I, I think I said something like this. Well, how did he know him? Because he'd had so much contact with them uh, you know, coming up to this point. And I don't know how much contact they've had. There's been a bunch and a bunch of altars. But whatever it was, it brought him to be able to recognize them. <clears throat> and so um, we saw a change, and, I, and uh, probably n starting next week, so get the word out. If there's anybody you know that was in the uh, the First Peter class uh I'm going to I'm going to bring some things together in relationship to the firstborn that also just tie perfectly in with First Peter and the things that we talked about there, and uh, try to um, uh, see what the Lord's going to do with that because I think it's going to be pretty wonderful. Anyway, so you have 
you have them coming and you have Abraham jumping up and running over to them and you have him addressing them as Adonai even though it's the three of them it's Elohim for sure because they're all three there but Adonai because that is a particular title in relationship to a particular thing and um, but we're not ready to talk about that so much right now uh, and then you have you have him doing all these things um, he's he's washing their feet he's um, uh, let's see if I can just yeah he's getting water washing their feet and he's talking about wanting them to rest under the tree and and have a morsel of bread which we we equated with communion and uh, uh, comfort your hearts and go get a fatted calf and all this kind of stuff and we talked about that and we likened those things to things that were most holy ground to us, to our our people, us, you and me, and and those who who are with us, whether it's in Ireland or any any other country or any other state, um, and that was that Mary of Bethany washed his feet, and that the prodigal son from the father ate of the the fatted calf and began to awaken to the the firstborn that is within him not him being that firstborn but he is the firstborn in the sense of that firstborn was in him and and then the bread bringing the bread and breaking bread together and <clears throat> resting under the tree and it talks it, it doesn't say a tree it uses that term twice when referring to where they sat the tree and uh, comforting their hearts um, and um, and as I thought about it I, I could just hear us you know praying and saying oh you know Lord we want to wash your feet and Lord we want to we want to eat the fatted calf with you uh, we want to um, uh, we want to bless you we in doing these things father we want to bless you by us eating of that fatted calf we want to bless you Jesus so that in us we're washing your feet we want to have fellowship with you and that being about you not us it's about you Lord it's not about us and 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 uh, we want to comfort your hearts and all of those things came up here and all of those things are important to us and all of those things we've said and everything in that uh, um, in that sense but I noticed here that when Abraham went through the list and said all those things let a little water I pray you be fetched and wash your feet let this going like that when he finished saying all of the the holy ground things that we have placed such emphasis on <coughs> excuse me um, they said the father the son and the holy spirit they said this is uh, verse 5 they said so do as you have said and that really affected me recently because I know that we have all said oh Lord we just want to wash your feet and and you know and we name off all those things and he's going well how about this you do what you're talking about how about you don't say it in a service and sound spiritual or say it in a prayer and sound spiritual or say it in this thing how about you do it you know do as you said do what you say don't just say it and and you know I mean it's true you know you I could I could write all kind of stuff that sounds spiritual and whatever and and have no real um, um, relationship with them uh, in this kind of a spirit um, I, I was thinking when Abraham was doing it 
I love this picture. I love this thing. He gets down on his knees. And so we would see Mary Bethany there. We would see Mary Bethany washing Jesus' feet. But Abraham got the jump on her first and he washed Jesus' feet and he washed the Father's feet and he washed the Holy Spirit's feet. Oh my Lord, that we could be, that we could have such a privilege. And guess what? We do have that privilege. There's nothing holding us back except for if we're one of the, the disciples going, well, you know, uh, uh, this is a waste. Or if we're one of the, the, if we're one of the Pharisees there saying, well, you know, doesn't this man know, you know, that this is a sinner or all this kind of stuff. The Lord doesn't care about all that. We've seen it that the thing that he cared about with Mary of Bethany and with the prodigal son and, and, and with all, all the um, holy ground places that the Spirit of God has allowed us to go, that they did it. So do as you say. And they went and did it. And um, they did it. They did it to their own hurt, if you will. Mary Bethany, first of all, she she poured out everything she had that was worth anything. She got she thought her reputation was bad before. Now all these guys that are watching her, you know, holy men of God called the twelve disciples, they're gonna be saying all this stuff and you know, and who knows? I mean, Jesus rebuked them and, and commended her. Well, they said, well, we could have given this to the poor. Well, go give to the poor then. Don't sit around and talk about it. But better than that was this, this opportunity that comes only from the heart of us towards him because it's not him doing anything. Jesus with Mary Bethany, he, was, he just sat there and let her do it, you know. And he had no anything to do in that situation except to take it and to receive it. But when it came to people shooting off their mouth about, well, this and that, then he rebuked them. But that's, we hear, we hear nothing from the father when he's getting his feet washed or when he's, when uh, he's getting that morsel of bread or that fatted calf or that we hear nothing from the Holy Spirit when he's getting that and when he's receiving that from from Abraham who is so excited he's running at a hundred years old <laughs> you know Sarah get the bread together we got to do this thing we got to break bread and I got to give it to him. And, you know, we've got to commune. And, I, and, and see, here's the deal is the communion he was having was just watching them enjoy it and, and watching them allow him to pour out on them. Because, you know, we went, we went over this last couple of classes in just the chapter before about the only thing Abraham said when God was saying, I'll give you this and I'll do this for you and I'll do this. And just a whole, whole chapter of God, uh, Elohim, because that's how Elohim works. They give to one another and they don't focus on themselves. Um, he's just, he's just fellowshipping in the fact that he could do that for them. That was his reward. And so, you know, <clears throat> this, this uh, verse 5 part here, uh, you, know, he, let a, you know, let a little, can, will you be okay with let a little water? And will you rest yourselves under the tree? Rest, find rest, rest for you, rest for you, not just rest for us, not just wash us. And, um, and, you know, I'll make, you know, I'll, I'll go get a fatted calf ready. And it might, you know, touch your heart, please your heart. And he could, they three 
could have turned it to them one another and said, well, that's just amazing. That's wonderful. That's a big step from the last chapter where he said, oh, that Ishmael would, would walk before us. They didn't, they didn't do that. They didn't say, wow, this is great. They looked at him and said, do what you said. Do what you said. Great things. Great stuff. You're right there, Abraham, in the top echelon of the, of the cool stuff that we would want to happen to us. That we would want to receive back. That you, you would make it all, truly make it all about us. But, go take the time to, as it were, get at our feet and cry the tears that, that, that she did, that you can wash our feet with that. Take the time and do that. And, you know, go through all of those things in real life situations, in real time. And, and when, when do we do that? Mm, I, I, this is me. I question how much we do that in service because I know it's easy for us to, I mean, you can feel the spirit and you can sense that there are, you know, some of us are really, you know, whoever that is, uh, wanting this and everything. But man, the time to do that isn't, isn't it the gathering, the time to do that is every chance we get, you know? I mean, Abraham did it in the heat of the day. He did it in the heat of the day without anybody else around. I mean, I always, I always picture just a desert and there's one tree. <laughs> and then there's this tent there, you know. I don't know what it was like, but, you know. And then it's just hot you know, hot. So anyway, that was, that area just affected me because, you know, in sharing, I can, I can talk about what Abraham did, but will I do that? You know, I can, I can, I can pull that out of the scriptures and, and make it fit with Mary of Bethany and the prodigal son coming into the firstborn and, and all of the aspects of that and communion and broken bread and poured out wine that we, you know, that we could be for him <clears throat> and go through all of those things. But what good is that? And now I'm talking about me. What good is that if I'm not doing that, if I'm not wanting that, if I'm not um, finding ways to make that real. And I've, I've always felt like that's what would make the gathering perfect is when we all already came. And I know that happened to me. The first one where we said it's about him, I felt like some of the people before we even started already had that spirit. I want it all the time. I don't want it for special occasions. I don't want to prep myself for a special occasion. I mean, you know, if, if we had a big, if we had a big conference and stuff, we might prep ourselves. We might, you know, get our hair cut, which I haven't done since the coronavirus thing, <laughs> not once. And, but, you know, we get our, our hair cut and, you know, ladies, our face done or, you know, many, many different things that we would do to, to be ready for that special time. But the true readiness isn't about us. It's about Him. And see, that's what's so hard for us because, well, I want to be ready for the gathering or I want to be ready when we have sharing time or I want to be ready. But for them, that readiness is when we, when we just forget about ourselves. We become self-forgetting. And this is the first time Abraham's really done that. It really is. Toward God. Toward God. I think all of us have been self-forgetting towards one another at times where we just don't 
make it about us. We bless them, the other person. I, I think we've done that. I think we've got the Lord. I'm not saying we don't have the Lord. I'm saying I was dealt with over this. And that's why I'm sharing it. And that I, I, I want to do it. I don't want to talk about it. And I don't want to stand before God one day. And he said, well, you know, you, Randy, you were really good at talking about that stuff. How come you never did it? You know, God help. God help us. God help me. You know, where, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that's enough. Enough said on that. <clears throat> so, um, so there at the end, and I think I'd said some a few things along this line, and I think I probably have a couple of things in my notes about it. But, <clears throat> but when it was when they were eating, um, Abraham just stood there and watched them eat. I don't know. I. I wonder. I wonder if the way that the father ate was different than the way the son ate, or the son ate differently than the Holy Spirit, or, uh, I, or I wonder if they all ate the same, the same way. <clears throat> and I wonder, and this is me, this, my mind goes to stuff like this, but I, I wonder, I wonder if this meal was the best meal they ever had, if you will, in that, in that, it came from such a place that they just wanted to eat and savor it. I mean, for some reason, I didn't just see Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My God, every time I say that, that right there, I just freak out. But I, 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 I can't see them like you'd see in a movie where the three sit down and they go. And it doesn't appear that they're talking a lot, you know. And uh, uh, they're just, you know, they're all three doing it the same way. I don't really see them going, <laughs> but I wonder if they weren't savoring it and just holding it and just letting the flavor of it not 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 because Sarah's a good cook and so it's got extra flavor but because of the heart in which it was given that they just and, and you, you don't have them talk. You don't have them talking. You don't have Abraham talking. <clears throat> Meal times, a lot of times, are a place for talking. I know Deb's family. You didn't talk during any meals. You sat there and ate. My family, of course, I had three brothers and two sisters, and woohoo! We whooped it up. We were crazy. We had fun, food fights, and teasing each other, and all that kind of stuff. But I wonder if they are just taking it in. And if you could see, not the same exact face, but at this moment, let's say the Holy Spirit just, you know, and the, and the Father's, you know, has another face at that moment, maybe that same face later or whatever. But they're, you know, they're... Um, I don't know, I don't want to use the word surprise because God knows everything, but they're surprised at the, at the greeting they got from Abraham after all of those other chapters were so self-centered. And this one is like no self at all coming out of Abraham. Just them. Just your desire. Just your satisfaction of heart just just the things that touch you just just what will um, make your day <clears throat> and uh, so after hearing all of that after hearing Abraham say all that 
I can understand why they'd go, look, you know, that's good, but, if, you know, if you're going to say it, why don't you do it? Abraham was off running. I mean, I'm still picturing that old man running. Those skirts, as it were. Uh, you know, they would gird themselves up and run or whatever. I, I can just see him changed from trying to make God in, in the previous chapter, just a few verses from this one, uh, except Ishmael. And they're watching him, and they're going, you know, okay. You know, he didn't come back and say all that. And then they said, well, you know, do what you say. And he went, okay, it's going to take me a while, you know. And I'll check, you know, I'll check how things go and then walk off. You know, remember, I'm old, you know. That didn't happen. They hear that. <laughs> they hear that, and then they see this guy take off, running, just running, and I, and I don't know, I don't know, you know, I don't know anything. It doesn't say anything, so I'm speculating, and speculation means absolutely nothing, expect, especially my speculations. <clears throat> but I'm wondering if they're kind of looking at each other and going, you know, maybe they didn't say anything, but they're going, look at this guy go, man, he's serious. You know, this is, let's see what happens here. <clears throat> and again, you know, uh, we say God knows everything, so that's stupid. But, you know, shortly we're going to get into the fact that he's, he's, after he's done eating, he says to Abraham, where's Sarah? She's in the tent. Where would you expect her to be, Lord? <laughs> He knows where she is. That's like, like God appearing to Adam and Eve, you know, and, and calling out, where are you in the garden? He knows where they are. <clears throat> so I think that there are things in God that they can be blessed. They can be maybe a little surprised because he allows for that. I don't know. You know, I got nothing to base that on. But I, I just don't see them the whole time just sitting there going. Well, we got to get on to Sodom and Gomorrah, man. This guy needs to go a little fast. I don't see any of that. I don't see any of that. And I don't see my God as being just a stump, a dead stump that sits there. Uh, I, through my years of being with the Lord, I have seen that there are things that deeply touch his heart. Deeply touch his heart. I have seen things that I know I have, through whatever means the Spirit allowed, I know that he was truly blessed. And that's what we always aim for at the gathering, that when this is over, we can truly say truly, he was blessed, not just us. And uh, I just know, I know, and I've seen things in the scriptures that, that bear that out, such as the <laughs> examples that this, you know, that were done here that are that has the examples in the, New Testament of Mary of Bethany, you know, let her alone. She's done this for my burial, but she's aware of where I'm headed in just a few days. And leave her alone, because she hath wrought a good work. Okay, so, there's so many things. There's so many things. <clears throat> All right, so uh, enough with my speculations. Um, usually, uh, I, I don't know how, how it is so much in, in most families uh, when it comes to meal time and stuff, but I know that 
basically most people that I know and their families, they're big eaters. They like to eat. They like to eat. It's very rare to find somebody that's really isn't that enamored with food or the taste of food or whatever. I'm one of those. I mean, I, you know, I, I eat. Uh, I, I've told this uh, maybe once in my life to y'all, maybe a couple of times. But when I was a little boy, I wished that somebody would invent a pill and then I could just eat a pill and not have to go sit down and take the time and chew the food and do all that and whatever. Um, so I think that most people, you know, and that God made it that way because it's a, it's a um, physical manifestation of a spiritual truth. So I have every reason to believe they enjoyed the meal. <laughs> and I have every reason to believe that Abraham was blessed to be able to stand there, because it says that's what he did. He stood by and watched them enjoy not not just the food, but the heart in which it was given. The heart that was given, in which it was given. <clears throat> and uh, I know that uh, Deb's mom was a great, incredible cook and everything. <clears throat> and we would be invited to Thanksgiving or Christmas. And we would go there, and I mean, my Lord, the amount of food and the the, how good it was and desserts and all this stuff, you knew that this took her a long, long, long time. <clears throat> and um, that um, she, she worked hard to do every bit of it and everything. And a lot of times, I mean, because this is the way people are, we eat and then we feel comfortable and then we go watch football, guys particularly. Uh, you don't hear a lot of compliments and stuff. And I realized that, you know, she was doing this from her heart. And so that one year, actually, it started something that I started doing from then on. I left a little note for her and I said, thank you for all the work that you put into this. It's amazing and how good the food is. And and I, I just, I said something like, you know, I, I didn't just, the food didn't just taste good. I could taste your heart in this. You gave us from your heart and everything. And uh, I was a foreigner to the family, if you will. We were newlyweds, fairly new and stuff like that. Boy, from then on, me and her were tight. Uh, I even had some of the Deb's uh, brother or sister say to me, I think she likes you more than she likes her own children. <clears throat> well, it's just that I think God was taking in the savor of Abraham being so different, so only focused, truly not focused on himself, truly not asking anything for himself, you know. Um, uh, uh, somewhere in here I've got, let's see, let me just read a little bit since I've been talking a whole bunch here and we're almost going to be done. He was blessed by seeing them filled up and sustained and ready for the rest of their journey. And as they ate under the tree, they were becoming rested and contented and Abraham could observe that. And then I, I jotted down a little something about Abraham's version of finding favor with God. It says in verse 3, uh, My Lord, uh, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray thee, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I put down the point is that his version of finding favor in Elohim's sight is different from our modern-day Christian version. He sees gaining favor from God as more to do, that it has more to do with being granted the beauty of doing things for Him, for God, instead of us being favored by God. See, I, 
I want the favor of God. There are whole sermons, folks, built around, I want the favor of God. And, and uh, you know, even the book of Esther, you know, all those women when they were brought in to find out who would replace Vashti and all of that, you know, they wanted to have favor with God. And God did give them favor. But Esther was chosen because she got with the guy that represented the Holy Spirit and found out what he liked. Now that's, what if that was the basis of favor that God understands and that all of this stuff, not just in our lifetime, but in the generation before and the generation before and generation before for, for 2,000 years, the concept has been that favor with God means that you can become a great minister or you can have a great ministry or you can be, you know, famous or you can, you know, all this stuff about us. Well, that man has the favor of God on him. Well, what if that's not what it, really what it's about? But us favoring God and not being self-centered, not being ambitious, not being someone who wants to be higher instead of lower, someone who wants to be more instead of less, somebody who wants to be seen instead of unseen. It's me, it's me. I mean, it's what you do if you're going to get on the internet. It's me, it's me. I mean, you know. You, could, you can make a big splash. You find out ways, well, if you do this, this, and this, and this, you'll get more hits, and then you'll get famous, and people will like you, and if you do it on YouTube, they'll pay you, you know, and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like you got to sell your soul to selfishness and self-centeredness just to be famous for God or something like that. And I know that's not the only case there is, and we're on the Internet, and da da da, da. I'm not saying don't be on the Internet. No. I'm not saying don't, uh, you know, it, that it's wrong to become famous or rich or any of that stuff. I mean, the example, the example that most people think of for that is Solomon. Okay? What was Solomon? He was considered the wisest man in the world. Right? Wisest man in the world. He was considered the richest man in the world, right? Richest man. Okay, so we go, so, see, God's for that. And God, you know, God will do that for me. <clears throat> well, okay, there was kind of something that happened before that. There was kind of a situation where he realized he was going to become king in place of King David, his father, who was going to die and who really, really, really knew the Lord and really, really had the Lord and really, really walked with the Lord and really, really spoke the word of God, spoke, spoke the things towards God's heart because he was a man after God's heart instead of his own glory. And so Solomon comes and he comes before God and he says, I don't know. I don't know how to do this, you know. I, I, I don't, you know, I don't have any wisdom, you know. I don't have any, I don't have it together, you know. And I'm just asking you for wisdom to, to guide your people, to cover your people. He was, he was broken. He was afraid in the sense of, uh, you know, are you sure I'm the right man for the job? I don't think I'm ready. I don't know anybody that really ended up going for God that I've known in my 71 years that didn't start out going, I don't think I'm ready. I mean, <laughs> when Deb and I... Deb and I announced that when we were in Bible school that we were, when we graduated, we were going to get married, okay? So as soon as the leadership heard that, <clears throat> they went to me one day and said, Randy, we want, the, the elders did, and said, we want to talk to you. I'm like in my early 20s still. We want to talk to you. What'd I do? <laughs> you know? um, when you graduate and you and Deb get married, we'd like to send y'all to be missionaries 
in Jamaica, not in the, not in the fancy places, not in Montego Bay or Kingston, but way off in what they call the bush, but it's tropical, it's tropical. Um, <clears throat> and first words out of my mouth was, I, I just, I'm, I will have just graduated. I don't know anything yet. I, I can't do this. I don't, you know. And they said, oh, the Lord's going to take care of you, you know. Just pray about it and, you know, we'll get back with you. Well, of course, we ended up going. But I remember that feeling that, that Moses had, you know, and that Jeremiah had and that so many of them had. And that is, <clears throat> like, like Solomon, you know, I, I'll probably mess this up. I don't really have any wisdom like that. And God said, I'll give you wisdom and riches. He didn't ask for either one of those. That wasn't his heart. That wasn't where he's going. Did he get off later on from the Lord in certain areas? Yes, he did. But he started right you know, and Paul talks about that to uh, the Galatians, foolish Galatians, have you begun in the spirit now made perfect in the flesh? It is possible to start right and not end right. But it is possible to recognize that not being the center, that not being a big shot, that not ha seeking to have everybody you know, fawn over you, to not have a big ministry could be the best place instead of thinking, okay, I'm, I'm that right now. I don't have any of that. You know, Lord, bless me. And take me and instead, come to a place where you go, that's the, actually the best place that produces whatever else I want to stay that way. And you got, you got so many examples of that. I mean, Saul, King Saul, before he was king. When thou wast little in thine own eyes, then, you know, I made you king over my people. And, you know, but then you, you know, and you get that with a lot of pro, uh, kings and people in the, in the Old Testament. Just you know, see, so here's, I'll try to end right here. We try to make this about being low and um, <clears throat> not putting ourselves forward or not doing things to promote ourselves. It's not about that. It's what, Ab it's what Abraham did. Make it about him. You're still making it about you if you do that other. You're making it about you in that you're trying to be low, that you're trying to not put others first. That you're, you're, you, you get all wrapped up in that. You're, and then you're consumed with yourself. And, oh, oh, did I just exalt myself on that? And I, you know, I understand that we still mess up. I do it all the time and I'm ashamed of it. But I, I know that the answer is not to focus on me, but let's bring this to the Lord. Let's satisfy the Lord. Let's bless Him. Let's think about Him. Let's make Him our focus. And if you get in that far enough, you do come to a place where, where the doing of it, because He said it, so then go do what you said. The doing of it starts becoming habit, and, and habit becomes, well, eventually it becomes nature. So, you know, this is just a wonderful thing that has happened to Abraham. Wonderful thing. And I'm, to me, to me, this is, this is part of when we get into next week uh, in this class on Thursday, that I would like to, because the Lord did this, I would like to bring in, not from First Peter, but from our story here, that literally... 
is talking about what Peter was trying to communicate in First Peter, and we can, we can, we can taste First Peter at the same time that we're tasting the Lord. So let's pray. Father, I just love you, and I, I can't imagine the blessing that Abraham had, the blessing to get down on his face and wash your feet, Father, and to Jesus to be the first, as it were, to wash yours, and then for him to be still down on the ground and wash the Holy Spirit's feet feet who is who does nothing but pour out and give and bless with gifts and and never is makes it about himself but about the father and the son he doesn't speak of himself and wash his feet i can't imagine being able to do a set of things one after the other that would be maybe some of the highest things for your heart, for all three of your heart, and to bring satisfaction and rest. And Lord, just that, that heart, that contentment. Father, I just ask you to continue to draw us out of ourselves, if it's possible, Lord. And, Lord, that we would be more diligent to get into the Word. How can we know Jesus when Jesus is telling us, search the Scriptures to find me, and there you'll have life. There he points us to have the Spirit of God declare him instead of him declaring himself. Father, we ask you to make it real and make it alive in us together and individually. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.